Okay, so I, I've been talking about wanting to do this for a while. Uh, the idea of actually going through the, kind of the workflow of, of creating one of these things. Um, I've just got Premiere open here. This is uh, my, my wonderful template for creating live stream videos because they're all, you know, 30 seconds long. Just a little picture, some music, no big deal. Uh, so I'll get that out of the way real quick. Uh, and so we're going to start with Adobe Audition. Uh, what was it for? This is for Ubisoft, so it was uh, 0613. It's always important. Oh, and of course, there. see, th this is the problem. See, I use <laughs> just one of those days, right? Um, I, I use the, the number pad a lot, and you can't do that with XSplit Open because it uses that to switch scenes. Awesome. So whenever you're doing any kind of recording, you got to make sure you've got it organized properly. So I've got my various folders and they're all basically organized by date so that if I need to go back to them, I can always go back to them and, and get what I need out of it. So for the news wrap up, uh, whenever I'm doing any of the news wrap ups, I've always got a script that I've written. So this one here is, you know, we've got a bunch of different items because I'm, I'm reading from a script. I'm not one of those people that gets to talk, you know, off the cuff and actually sound useful and good and all of that kind of stuff. It just, it's not me. I'm not that guy. Um, so I've read my script, this one in particular, what do we got about yeah, a little bit shy of two pages. Um, my talking speed is around three minutes, three and a half minutes per page, um, at this, uh, font and, and size. Um, so let's begin, shall we? So we've got our multi-track session in Adobe Audition. Um, you have to go to your track, you set, uh, set it to arm for recording, and then pick what your input is. I've got the, uh, uh, the second track here is just a mono track, which is all I need. I'm recording using a Roland Quad Capture, uh, which is an amazing device, absolutely amazing. Um, uh, let me bring over the, the control panel here really quick. So the Quad Capture has a compressor built into it, which is pretty awesome to have, um, as well as some, you know, the different preamp stuff and whatnot that you can use. Um, the compressor keeps the volume from ever basically clipping is the way I've got it set, which is exactly what I need. So pop that out of the way again. And I, I'm just going to get right into it. Um, so you can see how many times I screw up when I'm recording these things. And uh, again, as I say, I'll put this up on the channel. Let the madness begin. My name is Tarmac, and this is your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the Ubisoft E3 2016 press conference. Follow me on twitter.com slash gnomecast for more game news and insight. So each of the different sections that I'm recording, um, I, I go through and I record it separately. So right up here um, where, where you can see the track that I've got, um, I don't go through and I, like a, a lot of people, when you're taught to do recording, you're taught to do it where you set, um, you know, you don't record in the multi-track, you record in a single track. So let me go back over to the waveform. So you record like this, you'd hit record, and then you just keep doing different takes and then you would chop it up afterwards. Now for me, I have found, um, you know, I, honestly, I, I have found that it is so much easier to just record in the multi-track and then discard anything that I don't want. So if I do a really, really bad take of something, this one was, was a, a reasonable first try, good stuff. Um, if I have something that's really bad, I just delete it. And so then my, my media browser ends up being, you know, absolutely full of, of tracks that I'm not using. Um, but whatever, it's fine. They're just wave files. You can always delete them afterwards anyways. Uh, okay. So the first item on the news wrap up for this time around has to do with the Ubisoft press conference and their uh, Just Dance 2017, which was awful. And I'll show, I'll show you some of the video stuff from that afterwards. So next take. The Ubisoft press conference began with this drug-inspired mess. I have no idea why there is a dancing giraffe. And while this was one of the more amazing and crazy intros to a press event I've ever seen, it does rather squarely indicate that I am not part of the target demographic for Just Dance 2017. And I don't know if anybody watched the, uh, the press event. I assume that you probably did, but um, it, it, the giraffe was quite, uh, quite jarring to see. Let me see if I can get that video so I can kind of show that off. Yeah. 
work. Oh, too damn loud. Way too loud. So this is this was what they had shown, right? And there's there's the fucking giraffe over there, and the lion, and the the guy with his guitar butterfly. It was uh, it was really special, really really special. Good afternoon, guys. I I kind of agree. I think Sony did a really really good. Uh, Really, really good stuff. Yeah, I uh, all of the rest of them were named properly, and I just I had forgotten to name that one, so I named it late. And yeah, that's uh, that's what it got called. But yeah, such is life. Okay, so the next one uh, is Ghost Recon Wildlands, um, and that was you know another I don't I don't know it was just so bland and Ubisofty, but whatever. Here goes. Up next was Ghost Recon Wildlands, which I'll admit looks pretty good from a graphical standpoint, but also when considering mobility. It's a third-person modern military shooter with stealth elements, drones, and vehicles. Here's my issue, though. Ubisoft has always been good at making these games look more exciting than they really are. At this point, though, Ghost Recon games are so genericized, and the tactics that used to be in these games is completely gone, which is a disappointment. This presentation involved significant camera cuts, fake player commentary, with such lines as this, which no multiplayer group has ever spoken. So, uh, and the, the reason that I'm leaving it with that is the transition between this section here and the next one, uh, I'm going to have a piece of the audio. So it, it during the Ubisoft press conference, they're, they're talking in the game as though they're actually in the game. Like there's players talking and they're congratulating each other on how difficult a mission it was and all that kind of bullshit. Uh, so I wanted to actually have that. I'll have the audio come back in in between the different clips so that it shows that piece off. Okay, so next up after that is South Park. Which actually looked really neat. Um, I didn't actually get a chance to play Stick of Truth, and I probably should have. Um, but the the Fractured But Whole is uh, <laughs> a fantastic title, and I'm going to have to try that one out for sure. See if I can't get a press copy of it. I'm not sure that I'll like it, but it looks good, and I'd rather not pay for it if I can avoid it. All right. Okay, for this next one, I have to show you a piece of the reveal because the context is amazing. Let me just say that South Park, the fractured but whole, looks great. You play as the new kid who has moved into South Park and the other kids are engaged in a sort of civil war to create their own superhero money-making franchise. I find these games refreshing for the same reason I find Overwatch refreshing. We've had years and years and years of games taking themselves too seriously, like Tom Clancy Ghost Recon Wildlands, for example. And games that indulge in the fact that we all still have that little kid inside that loves gaming are like a breath of fresh air. Also, the amount of F-bombs dropped during the South Park section of the press event was actually quite enjoyable. See, and, and some of these longer paragraphs, and that was me screwing up dramatically. Um, as I, I get towards the end of that particular phrasing and I needed to swallow, <clears throat> and that, uh, that causes issues. And this, this just happens. It's, it's the way it goes when you're recording a bunch of stuff. So as I mentioned, again, recording in the multi-track and you've got each one separated out nicely. This last one, we're just going to wipe that out and start over and hope that I don't screw up five or six times in a row because that will get really boring to watch really quickly. Now, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, as I recall, I had to separate this into two chunks. Uh, and this was for the same reason as I had uh, I had left the previous one on for um, uh, left the ending such that I can actually have a little bit of the the reveal footage the audio come back in to show off the players talking and how ridiculous it sounds. Um, that's right. I was going to do the same thing on this one. So this first one is just a quick little single line. Okay, for this next one, I have to show you a piece of the reveal because the context is amazing. So we'll have a split there with some video footage in between and then pull into the rest of it.
Let me just say that South Park the Fractured But Whole sounds great. You play as a little new kid who's moved into the South Park. Uh, no, not the South Park. Moved into South Park. Try that again. Gets irritating, I know. Let me just say that South Park, the fractured but whole, looks great. You play as the new kid who has moved into South Park, and the other little kids are engaged in a sort of civil war to create their own superhero money-making franchise. I find these games refreshing for the same reason I find Overwatch refreshing. We've had years and years and years of games taking themselves far too seriously, like Tom Clancy, Ghost Recon Wildlands, for example. And games that indulge in the fact that we all still have that little kid inside that loves gaming are like a breath of fresh air. Also, the amount of F-bombs dropped during the South Park section of the press event was quite enjoyable and really showcases how not American Ubisoft is. Hey, we made it. You're not supposed to hope that I screw up. Jeez. <laughs> That's going to make this live stream last way too long. Uh, okay, so after South Park, we get back into yet more Tom Clancy games. Is Tom Clancy still alive? I gotta wonder what, uh, you know, that, that whole thing, like, it, does, does the name Tom Clancy mean anything anymore? It used to. You know, the old games, they were, it was all strategy. It was... If you got shot, you died. You had to, you're crawling through grass and, you know, it, it was a very strategy heavy game and they're not that anymore. Now they're just action nonsense. I don't know. All right, here we go. From a game that takes itself far too seriously to one that doesn't, we're back into another game that does. Because what year would be complete without two Tom Clancy titles? The Division is getting an expansion called The Underground, which from all descriptions is effectively a random quest and dungeon generator. The intent is for it to be different every time. They also discussed a future expansion called Survival, which, you guessed it, is a supply management survival style being added to the game and is apparently also having weather effects because that matters. And this is actually remarkable. I usually screw up a lot more than this, so reacting under pressure or something. Uh, okay, so the next one, uh, what was the next one? Virtual reality. Oh, yes. Palmer Lucky and his, uh, his amazing haircut. You know, I, I, I feel like I shouldn't comment on people's physical appearance at these kind of events. Um, and I would never comment on somebody's weight or something like that, but God damn it. If you just got a few million dollars in your pocket from Facebook for selling your company, get your hair cut before you go to a convention for fuck's sake. Okay. We got to see some interesting VR work via a PVP demo of a game called Eagle Flight. Ubisoft brought Palmer Lucky out on stage to be part of the showcase. He must just be getting virtual haircuts done these days. The Eagle Flight game is a capture the flag team game where you need to grab a dead rabbit and get it back to your nest, all the while other eagles are chasing and shooting death rays at you. It's a neat concept with a lot of terrain movement and speed. Why didn't you like the, the VR part of the Sony, uh, Sony conference? What did they show? Let me go back to my thing here. Farpoint, um, Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, so that's right. They, they had showed the, um, uh, like the, the Star Wars thing where it's, it's an X-Wing mission or something like that. Um, in the EA conference, when they were talking about all the different, so e EA did their Star Wars thing and it basically showed nothing. It was, and I, I commented on it in the, in the wrap up that I did. It was basically them coming out and saying, Hey, look guys, we have the Star Wars license. Aren't we special? Um, but if you take a look at the VR section, um, and I think I actually had that in the video in the VR section, they showed the, the Sony, the PlayStation VR, 
And they also had a little piece shortly thereafter showing some of the work on the like devs monitors. Um, and they had X wings and what was very obviously the trench from the death star. So if they're going to do some kind of a, you know, an on rails shooter or something like that, that one just makes the most sense, right? I mean, you do, you do a trench run in the death star and, and like, this is the cliched thing, um, it's just, it simply is, right? That, and that's kind of okay. It would just suck if that's all it is. You know, I mean, it's, it, it should be more than that. This whole let's make VR into tech demos thing is kind of ticking me off a little bit. Okay, so the next one was uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew. Also on the VR front, we got to see a heavily edited bit of play from a few members of the various Star Trek casts using the new Star Trek Bridge Crew VR game. LeVar Burton, Carl Urban, and Jerry Ryan put on an Oculus Rift each and got to see what VR looks like by being a part of the bridge crew of a Star Trek ship. Now, as a former Next Generation fan, and reading Rainbow fan to be perfectly frank, seeing how excited LeVar got talking about this game was great to see. It isn't as graphically amazing as some others, and various stations looked like they were really, really simple to operate, so it's probably more of a social game than a complex one, but that still got me excited. See, I made it to the end of that one, but there was definitely a couple of, uh, a couple of hiccups along the way, so we're going to do that one again. Do I have any VR hardware? Um... Just this stupid thing. Gear VR is interesting. It's nice to be able to experience it. Um, like during the, the Microsoft um, Minecraft thing for Xbox, uh, they had uh, John Carmack out on stage and he's got his Gear VR going and he's showing that off. It's The resolution is not good enough where I want to spend any time in it at all. And I, I just don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm usually good at, at getting the the you know enough breath in there and being able to kind of you, you turn to the side a little bit when you inhale and and things like that, but not every time it uh, it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, okay, hang on, was this the one? Do I need to delete this still? Yeah, that's the one I got to wipe out. Okay. Also, on the VR front, we got to see a heavily edited bit of play a few members of the various Star Trek casts use... Oh, did I... You know what? That's... Oh, my script is broken. That's what threw me. Heavily edited bit of play by... It's, it's odd how when you're writing a script like this... Um, uh, to... Uh, a single word can fuck up your whole run. It's actually quite interesting how that how that turns out. Um, just simply not having the word by there. And then your your brain gets to that part of the script, you know, heavily edited a bit of play, a few members of the various stars. So you, you your brain tries to insert something and then the whole reading is screwed up. It's just, I don't know. I, I've done that so many times. You leave out a single word and it just ruins everything. Also, on the VR front, we got to see a heavily edited bit of play by a few members of the various Star Trek casts using the new Star Trek Bridge Crew VR game. LeVar Burton, Carl Urban, and Jerry Ryan put on an Oculus Rift each and got to see what VR looks like by being a part of the bridge crew of a Star Trek ship. Now, as a former Next Generation fan, and reading Rainbow to be perfectly frank, seeing as how excite- oh, see- seeing- uh, uh, where did I screw that one up? So, seeing as how- I'll try that again. Nothing like, uh, nothing like inserting a word where there wasn't one. See, that was a little bit different. That's the exact opposite problem. The Go Liver. Hello. That's a, that's a precious name you have there.
All right. Take four. Also, on the VR front, we got to see a heavily edited bit of play by a few members of the various Star Trek casts using the new Star Trek Bridge Crew VR game. LeVar Burton, Carl Urban, and Jerry Ryan put on an Oculus Rift each and got to see what VR looks like by being a part of the bridge crew of a Star Trek ship. Now, as a former Next Generation fan, and reading Rainbow to be perfectly frank, seeing how excited LeVar got talking about this game was great to see. It isn't as graphically amazing as some others. All it takes, and it's... It's just that one little slip. Take five. Also, on the VR front, we got to see a heavily edited bit of play by a few members of the various Star Trek cast using the Star Trek Bridge Crew VR game. LeVar Burton, Carl Urban, and Jerry Ryan put on an Oculus Rift each and got to see what VR looks like by being a part of the bridge crew of a Star Trek ship. Now, as a former Next Generation fan, and reading Rainbow to be perfectly frank, seeing how excited LeVar got talking about this game was great to see. It isn't as graphically amazing as some others, and the various stations look like they were really simple to operate, so it's probably much more of a social game than a complex one, but that still got me excited. So, here's the shitty part about that one, and I'm not redoing it, because fuck it, I've already done this too many times. My phone made a noise during that. And let me, let's, let's go see who that was. Who, who caused that? That would be the follow notification from Incidific. Congratulations. Your uh, follow notification might be audible in the video. We'll see. Because I'm not recording that again. That's one of the other things that I found when using the scripts like this is, and I, I wonder if I need to go back and rewrite some of the different sections um, because it's, it's obvious in a lot of cases when I have to redo a particular section, I'll have to redo it over and over and over again. And then I'll do, you know, all of the different paragraphs, both before and after are just perfect. Um, the ind indicates to me that maybe I wrote that section poorly. Um, you know, I, I'm generally very good at writing a script to how I speak, um, and it's usually not a problem, but every now and then I'll get, you know, again, one like that where I've got to record it again, five, six, 10 times. Yeah. Uh, okay, so up next is For Honor. I like Vikings. So seeing the gameplay trailer for the game For Honor, which essentially looks like a much more polished Norse version of Dynasty Warriors, kind of got me going a bit. Vikings with their battle axes fighting against samurai with their katanas. I have to admit that the combat did look a little bit slower than I would like. Game is slated for release on Valentine's Day 2017. Poster, poster. Oh, the one beside me. That's uh, Baldur's Gate 2. I worked at BioWare briefly, um, doing quality assurance during Jade Empire. And so as I was making my exit, um, when I was, because it was just a contract QA position, um, there was no final job waiting for me at the end of it. So they kind of let me go and, and raid the, uh, the swag room. And they had one of these posters and I've got one of the old Jade Empire ones behind my computer that they didn't make a whole bunch of. and. Neverwinter Nights up on the wall behind me. You know, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so that's For Honor done. Next up is... Hmm. Oh, right, the things that I don't want to talk about because they really weren't that great to see. Next up was a section with a few things that I wanted to touch on but not spend much time discussing. The robot Bud from Grow Home is back in a game called Grow Up. Clever, or something. We've also got another super amazing surprise released by the crew that made Blood Dragon. It's a mashup of Trials and Blood Dragon called Trials of the Blood Dragon. And it was released right after it was announced. Let's just say that I've not heard good things so far. And they had the Assassin's Creed movie producer on to talk about the movie, but I didn't actually watch that bit as I needed to take a quick break and the idea of that movie bores me. Let 
Gnomes? Why gnomes? So, when I was, God, I, I would have been 17, maybe? I have two brothers, and, and one of my brothers used to, he used to try to, to freak people out by doing these weird faces and things like that. And so he had, he had his, his June bug, which he had, you know, the little kind of motion in front of them. And he would, he would sneak up behind somebody and he'd make a screeching noise and they'd jump. Um, and then he, he came up with the gnome, which is a very similar sort of thing, but you scrunch your face up, puff your, your upper lip up and, and you kind of hunch down and, and you do the same thing. You, you sneak up behind somebody and you get right, right to their shoulder and they turn and they see that. And, and let me tell you, you can hear some people scream and it's great. Um, and for whatever reason, I picked up on doing that one too. And it just sort of stuck. Um, and now I have gnomes. I don't do it anymore. I'm 34 for fuck's sake. But um, now I've got gnomes everywhere. I've got a gnome planter behind me. I've got a lamp. I've got Spock gnome, zombie gnomes, other regular gnomes. Gnomes everywhere. And I can't escape it. So I figured if you can't escape it, you may as well embrace it, right? Uh, okay, so second last is Watch Dogs. What are we at? Four minutes, 15. Okay. Well, I, I shouldn't say I don't do it anymore. Now I only do it when I'm drunk at karaoke. This was followed up by a pretty decent presentation of Watch Dogs 2. Now, I'm really cautious about most things that Ubisoft does because of how atrocious they were regarding the Watch Dogs downgrade. It was such a stark and obvious sham, so this time around I'm skeptical. However, I need to say that the video footage they'd showed certainly looks a lot more like a game is actually supposed to look. It wasn't some super crazy high-res effects everywhere pre-rendered piece. It actually looked like game footage and didn't make me think that it looked too good to be true. So, that's a start. The game has much more interesting protagonists this time around and an up and coming, oh, no, we screwed that one up. An up and coming hacker, not and an up and coming hacker. He is the fucking hacker. I should, I should get a shirt that says that. That'd be great. Do you even know him, bro? The other thing that's awkward about this, and I, so I, I can't really, I mean, I, I guess I could pick up the camera. No, it's fine. You guys can deal with it. Uh, I've got, I have three monitors in front of me, right? So center and then two on the sides. Um, and I've got a GoPro in, in front of the camera that's recording all of this. Normally I've got the script sitting right in front of me. So I'm sitting straight on and I've got my recording over onto the right hand thing because I don't need to have that. And this is just how I had this set up because I'm a fool. Uh, for whatever reason, I set it up so that I wasn't going to be talking straight on. So now... It's all awkward and I'm just making excuses. Uh, okay, did I need to delete? This is the one I need to delete and I didn't. Yeah, okay, so we'll wipe that one out. Almost done the audio piece though. If I can just make it through this, the next one and the closing, we're good. Then we can get into the video editing. This was followed up by a pretty decent presentation of Watch Dogs 2. Now, I'm really curious about most things Ubisoft. Uh, not curious, cautious. Read the word right. Come on, get it together. This was followed up by a pretty decent presentation of Watch Dogs 2. Now, I'm really cautious about most things Ubisoft because of how atrocious they were regarding the Watch Dogs downgrade. It was such a stark and obvious sham, so this time around, I'm skeptical. However, I need to say that the video footage they showed looked much more like it was... Uh, 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 isn't that good? Fuck. This is the... This is the longest paragraph in the bunch, too. I used to break these up a bit more. Um... Am I, am I streaming at something stupid? Like,
I'm I'm so really sorry about that. I'm going to upload this to YouTube afterwards if you want to watch it there instead. Um, I may be streaming at 1080, 60. Um, so that could be the reason why it's having an issue. You know, I, I used to break these paragraphs up a bit more. I used to do, you know, like I'd record half of the paragraph or something like that. But I, I found over time that it starts to sound too stale. So it's not, uh, I don't know. I, you, 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 when you get right into it and you actually go through it, it doesn't take me too long. Uh, you know, right now, of course, I'm, you know, I'm rambling about it as well. When I actually sit down and just blast through one of these things, um, it doesn't take too long to just record the whole paragraph again. So, uh, what program are you using? Uh, Adobe Audition. CC 2015. About 60 bucks US a month for the whole CC package. Creative, creative what? Creative Cloud. Okay, let's do that one again. This was followed by a pretty decent presentation of Watch Dogs 2. Now, I'm really cautious about most things Ubisoft because of how atrocious they were. They were. Atrocious they were. This was followed up by a pretty decent presentation of Watch Dogs 2. Now, I'm really cautious about most things Ubisoft because of how atrocious they were regarding the Watch Dogs downgrade. It was such a stark and obvious sham, so this time around, I'm skeptical. However, I need to say that the video footage they showed looked much more like how the game is likely to look. It wasn't some super crazy, high-res, effects-everywhere pre-rendered piece. It actually looked like game footage and didn't make me think it looked too good to be true, so that's a start. The game has a much more interesting protagonist this time around, an up-and-coming hacker who has even more tools this time than last, including a drone and a remote control car. The game also has much more convincing parkour and a Lululemon system so that you too... Oh, shit. See, what I'm trying to do is at the end, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull in this H3, H3 thing. Because they showed in the video, they showed they, they have the parkour and they showed the, the girl with her running shorts. So I figured you can... Uh, do that Matt Haas connection. <laughs> Nothing like ruining the joke halfway through while people are uh, are just sitting there listening and recording garbage. This was followed up by a pretty decent presentation of Watch Dogs 2. Now, I'm really cautious about most things Ubisoft because of how atrocious they were regarding the Watch Dogs downgrade. It was such a stark and obvious sham, so this time around, I'm skeptical. However, I need to say that the video footage they showed looked much more like how the game is actually likely to look. It wasn't some super crazy, high-res, effects-everywhere pre-rendered piece. It actually looked like game footage and didn't make me think that it looked too good to be true. So, that's a start. The game has a much more interesting protagonist this time around, an up-and-coming hacker who has even more tools than last, including a drone and a remote control car. The game also has a much more convincing parkour system and Lululemon pants so that you too can hit on ladies, parkour away, and then hit people with copyright claims for no reason. I think that's okay. Yeah, Lululemon, they make the yoga pants and all that shit. Wasn't that new? Uh... So there, there's a... a comedy channel of a guy that that hits on women in a fake way and then somehow challenges them to some parkour shit they run around jumping all over the place so um the channel h3h3 productions did a reaction video to one of his and he sued them for copyright infringement that was a video i did a little while ago with uh with a guy named wells knight um basically talking about how awful this is for copyright. So that's why I was making that snark. Okay, and the last thing is steep. And finally, we heard from Eve Gimo about a new IP. I don't like heights. So I've got very little to say about this one. It represents a mountain range in Europe and includes squirrel suits, snowboards, paragliding, and skis in what seems to be a pretty open world game. I'm sure for those interested in snow sports, it'll be a lot of fun. And even though it's not my thing, I'll still review it if they send me code. The game is called Steep. Okay, so last but not least, we close it up. 
This has been your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the Ubisoft E3 2016 Press Conference. You can follow me for more news and game chatter on twitter.com slash gnomecast. I'm Tarmac. Thanks for watching. All right. So that gives us what, five, five minutes, 40 worth of audio. And so what I need to do at this point, I need to basically pull all of these things together. I'm going to do a quick little bit of editing. Um, most of the stuff that I have uh, that I do for editing is already taken care of. The, the audio device that I'm recording on, Roland Quad Capture, um, is the, the compression takes care of a lot of the problems that I have had. Um, it just makes everything better. And so I don't have to do a lot of the noise removal or any of those kinds of things that, that uh, I used to have to do. Now I just normalize it, run a quick mastering filter over top of it, and you're done. So all of these different things, I'm going to cut this apart later in, uh, in Adobe Premiere. So we mix down session to a new file. It's going to give us a single waveform. Let's just select everything, Control A. Amplitude and compression. We will normalize it once. Normalize is basically, it's just an audio function that takes the waveform and expands everything the same amount so it just it's increasing the volume but making sure that nothing on the track clips um it's not a great function to use with a waveform this long to be honest um but in you know for my purposes it's it's kind of fine and the other thing that i have under effects under special there is a mastering preset that i use called make room for vocals um and i use it on a vocal track so I just, this is, I, I found that I really, really enjoyed this, uh, the way that this one sounded, so. Damn it, phone. Stop making noise. Things to take, or take care of in advance. All right, so we will save all. Browse really quick because Audition never creates a new folder or never saves it to the new folder it creates for some silly reason. And we are good. Now, now we need Adobe Premiere. So I'll just drag that over real quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the previous news wrap up one that I had done. Um, the Microsoft press event. And we'll just use this as sort of our, our basic template. So this is what it ends up looking once it's they're looking like once it's finished, is I've got, you know, your your basic sort of intro card and then stepping into the various sections of uh of the actual video itself. So just wipe those out real quick, keep our exit. And clear out some of these things. Oops, nope, not that one. Because we're going to need a bit of space to bring in the new footage. And of course, you also got to make sure that you're changing your file names. and Because otherwise, you will lose stuff. Our project name has changed, and very quickly... We will change our file name as well, and then let the madness begin. Madness or something like that. Okay, so we've got a blank, something to work with. I will I'll just bring in our audio file over here. And this, this could be interesting um, if you've never done much in the way of editing before because I've actually gotten this down to kind of a science. Just do a little bit of cut, cut and paste, cut and slide, move things around a little. So we want this, uh, the vocal track to end right about where the music begins. So you can see how that how that ends up playing My name out. is Tarmac, and this is your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the Ubisoft E3 2016 press conference. Follow me on twitter.com slash gnomecast for more game news and insight. So it bleeds right into where the, the double bass kick comes in there.
So the other thing that I do on the news wrap up is every uh, news item is separated precisely by two seconds of silence. So you just create any anything. It doesn't really matter. Um, I don't. I haven't figured out a better way to do this yet. But create something that's two seconds long, and this gives me a, just an easy way to line things up. So the rest of the process for uh, for this piece, at the very least, is to go through, chop up the audio at each one of these different breaks in between the different sections that we had just finished recording. Whoops! Don't delete that. Put that back. Now, my first break that I need to make sure that I'm careful of was going to be, where was it? So it was right at the end of Ghost Recon and then the beginning of the South Park video. So that is here. So we'll have to make sure that we leave space in between the South Park one, but not too much. Edit that later. I think I'll just leave that that one uncut because that's that's the break where I'm going to have uh, some footage come in and show a different a different thing. Yes, I just undid something by going to the menu. I know you can control Z, I get it, but my hand is currently, it's a it's sort of a death grip on plus minus and delete. So it's actually just as quick to just go into the menu instead of, uh, instead of moving. No, oh. edit lock, good, good. So this forms the basic structure of the news wrap-up video itself, right? It's all, again, you go in, you do your, your um, audio scripting, writing everything down. I've got my different stories all ready to go, right? You go in and do the recording of it. So we've got the audio piece finished. And then the audio track itself forms the skeleton of the, of the news wrap-up video. Um, the track along the bottom is basically just a, a volume-reduced uh, theme song that I've got. Uh, it was the song that I used for my intros. It's all of those different things. It's, just, it's, it's there. See, the, a lot of people use background music because they think the background music needs to be really cool and people need to pay attention to it. And the fact of the matter is that's not true. Um, what background music does really well is make it so that the little bit of room echo that you have in the background behind you, because none of us record in a proper, you know, uh, noiseless environment, audio environment, we all have room noise. We all have this room echo because I've got walls around, I've got sound bouncing off of my monitors and bouncing back into my microphone. And so there is always going to be that room echo. So if you lay a, you know, just a track of say, uh, what is this? What do I have the volume set at? Negative 15 decibels, wasn't it? Um, I can't remember. Audio gain. Uh, no, negative 30. Oh, that's right. It is quite a lot more than I thought it was. Um, I just haven't changed it in so long. So if you have that little bed of audio going on, it makes the little bit of echo in your voice not noticeable. So there's just a little, a little trick to it. I've been doing an awful lot of audio recording for quite some time. There's, there, there's a fair amount of work that goes into these things. It's not, you know, not as much as some. I mean, I, I will be the first to admit that I should edit my videos more. I should have, I should have jump cuts. I should have a lot more interesting stuff. Like feature creep is an excellent example of that. It's a video that effectively has no editing at all. I just take a piece of audio track um i just I, I take a bit of game footage and i overlay it over top of me talking and that's it 
right? Okay, so the last piece here is during any news wrap up, one of my own personal little rules is that I fade the track to zero about halfway through the last story. So on this one here on the bottom, oops, we've already got a keyframe right about there on the audio track. So we can just put in any other, any other keyframe and we'll just pull this volume down to zero. So it fades out during that last track. And we'll grab our other videos and we're just going to, or our other pieces here. And we're just going to line this up because so the, the end of, of any of the news wrap ups, generally speaking is, you know, I, I have that final thanks for watching. Um, and the thanks for watching always begins after the outro music just starts up. So this will be right about here. Um, so we've got the, the I'm tarmac and then the music begins. Thanks for watching. And then the music starts to ramp up along with the you know the exit of the video gnomecast i'm tarmac thanks for watching right basic stuff nice and easy um, the only problem is that now i've started saying you know telling people that they should come follow me on twitter so that's actually made this a little bit longer than it normally is but that's fine doesn't cause us any problems okay so we now have our basic structure um, we are going to have to move our audio. I should have, uh, I'll, I'll probably have to deal with this music a bit because I am going to cut this section, um, this one here to show off some of the South Park stuff. So now we have our, our Ubisoft or Ubisoft, depending on your preference. All right. So we've got this shit first. Now, in the script, did I mention, uh, okay, so Dancing Giraffe. So the whole point was to line it up with the idea why there is a Dancing Giraffe. Right, so Dancing Giraffe appears there. Just throw a quick keyframe down because I would like to have there be an excellent frame of the dancing giraffe. Now, where is that? Where does he come up to the front? It's one of the things that I, I need to get a little bit better at um, is making sure to put things on the screen at the time that I need people to be able to see them. Okay, so the dancing giraffe, yeah, that's about right. He's got that point move going on. All right, so that gives us our point to line up to. So right about there. That's all good. Pull our track out so that we've got the, the line up to the beginning. Set up a quick fader. And bring this one back to about the midpoint between the two different audio tracks. And we have clip number one finished at that point there. Nice and quick and easy. And my computer just gave a high CPU usage warning. No idea why. Okay, so the intent had been... I guess I can... Okay, so we need to have some Ghost Recon Wildlands gameplay now. And I really wanted to capture the junk at the end of it. Uh, get that audio in there. Come on. All right, good. So at the end of the gameplay section, they're flying away in the helicopter and they're congratulating each other. And just, it, it's so cringeworthy. So it's right about here, I think. Cats? Cats? I got him in my line of fire. Well, hold him off. I gotta fly this thing. And we are clear, gentlemen. No. Uh, no. Hang on. I like that. I like that. Before the end, we are clear, gentlemen. 
Okay, so that looks like a good spot. That's where I want to have it line up with the end of the the previous audio track. So it'll hit right about there. Now I just want to move this out of the way and I need to extend and pull everything else out while I finish editing that chunk. Move all of those over at once. As ever spoken. And we are clear, gentlemen. Nice work. That was a tough mission. <laughs> Why did the audio kick out? Here, gentlemen. Nice oh, work. That was a tough mission. Oh man, that was close. Right there. Perfect. It was so cringeworthy. It was so bad. It just made me embarrassed for it. All right, so the rest of it we can extend back out, but we don't need the audio track for the rest. So. We have to hop in here really quick. And we're just going to do a really quick fade, uh, or rather, I guess a volume increase actually is what we're doing. We're just going to pull the rest of the track down to zero so it spikes up really quick here at the end. With such lines as this, which no multiplayer group has ever spoken. And we are clear, gentlemen. Nice work. That was a tough mission. <laughs> Now, the other thing, too, at that point is you probably want to take and dump the, the backing track sound as well. Now, how long was my fade at the end? Oh, man, that was close. All right, so right about there. But we're also going to fade the video out at the same time. So that works perfectly. And we'll fade our backing track back in. All right. I think that worked out okay. And we'll just bring back our South Park clip really quick here. Because that's where it's going to come back in. Oh, the Minecraft part was so bad. Oh my God, it was so bad. And... But you know what? The, the, the bulk of the fans of Minecraft don't care. They just want to see, hey, I can play with my friends because Jimmy has an iPad and I have an Android tablet and we can't play together because those companies are mean. I mean, the idea that you can take that game and you can play cross-platform with iOS versus Xbox versus Windows 10, I mean, it, that's all fine. Um, it would be nice if it wasn't just Windows 10. Um, I don't know if that's the case. But uh, I wasn't really paying that close attention. It's Minecraft. I don't play Minecraft. Okay. So remember this chunk here on our script really quick. So it was the, the okay for this next one. I have to show you a piece of the reveal because the context is amazing. And then we're going to take a quick split in between those two lines and have the video continue showing the piece of the reveal because the way that they started this off south park was revealed with a very just like tom clancy sort of way um and that was pretty that was pretty slick it, you know it shows off this this whole let's take ourselves way too seriously and then let's totally not right afterwards so grab that one just get out here really quick and where is that intro beginning oh it's right right okay good we can chop it right at the beginning there perfect now for this one we do need the audio track because we're going to use it just a little bit And so the, the way that I'm moving around quite so quickly on the keyboard is I, I basically have my hand hovering on uh, plus and minus just to the, the left of the backspace key and then index finger on delete. Um, so there's a whole lot of zooming out. You know, you zoom out, you pick a new place on the, on the timeline with your mouse and you zoom back in and it lets you move around really quick. Um, so my apologies if it's too quick for some. All right, so we know that this comes in nice and quick. We don't actually have to do a fade on it. 
um, because it's already fading in with the logo. And we have to go to the end of the reveal. Yes, right there where it shows the characters, the little figurines, or so you could say. Okay. So we need to, I'm going to take our, our faders again. We're going to fade our audio out, both our backing track and the audio uh, for the South Park intro vid. Hop over here, do the same thing on the close. Because I think it's worth having that piece intact myself. That good. Drop our background audio chunk. And then get right back into the description of it, which works perfectly. Six year olds presented. Well, not just two 20 year olds, but by 20 year olds. Um, yeah, right after the Gears of War trailer. I. I didn't, I didn't like the Gears trailer. Okay, so the next thing that I need is I need to line the rest of these audio segments back up, but I am going to need another two second clip to do that with because I've deleted or I, I ruined my spacing. I'll just make another two second one here real quick. Line that up at the beginning and move our stuff back in because I don't believe we have another split piece that I wanted to edit out. All right. Right back together and awesome. And then we will get ourselves to the midpoint between these two. Fade it out to black without showing any actual gameplay. Uh, I don't know that that's the best idea, but that's fine. Well, I'd forgotten to do a fader on the Ghost Recon video, so we'll do that now too. So at this point, there's a whole lot of jumping around back and forth. Um, it it turns into a real mess of, okay, now I need this clip, now I need this clip. You know, what's up next? Um, next clip in this particular case was the Division. Uh, now in the Division, did I have anything in particular that I wanted to line up. No, I did not. So we're just gonna take a random segment of the gameplay itself. Assuming I can find it. There we go. Random segment. And we'll block that over top of it because the division really is not that appealing to me. It never has been. I'm sorry, what, an MMO that lets me shoot somebody in the head with a gun and he's wearing a hoodie and that doesn't kill him? I'm sorry, no thanks. That is called a waste of my time. All right, so this one, we do not need the audio tracks. So we'll wipe that out. And next up, we have, we're gonna do Eagle Flight. And in Eagle Flight, the whole point here was to line this up with a joke about Palmer Lucky's hair. I'm pretty sure, is this the clip part of it that I was looking for? Like, look at, look at that. Like, get a haircut, man. You're going to be on... <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of people are going to watch the event that you're going to be at, and you're going to go with this bluff on top of your head? Come on. Yep, I think that's right about it. So, that's the section we want to line up to. And, actually, I should, maybe I'll explain that too. So, uh, when you're working in Adobe Premiere, um, you can you can kind of manipulate the different uh, the different 
clips however you want, right? So if I just go to the edge of this clip, right? This, this clip is a very shortened version, right? I can say, okay, I only want a few seconds of this. So I'm just gonna drag this clip in and that takes just that section um, that I didn't drag away. So when I, I set my point here, right, where he's put his hand up, and then I drag back from the left, that means that this clip is going to start at that particular moment in time. So now I go into my, my audio track here, um, and I said something about, what was it, virtual haircuts. So let's Flight. Go find Ubisoft brought Palmer Lucky out on stage to be part of the showcase. He must... All right, so it was right about here, saying he must just be getting virtual haircuts these days. It kind of ruins the joke to be in on on seeing how all of this stuff is put together, I know, but that's fine. So then we do, uh, so all I did was I just took from that same section, okay, now that that's lined up so that I have the moment when I say the thing lining up with the video that shows the thing, uh, then we just grab the track, expand back in the direction of the beginning so that it gets back to where it was and it keeps everything seamless. I don't have to have multiple cuts of, you know, different videos and things like that. Uh, we also don't need the audio track. So in Adobe Premiere, if you right click on a clip, you can go unlink and you can select the video and the audio track independently. So I just wipe out the audio track because I have my own vocals and I'm not using that audio for anything in the video. Uh, set up a couple more keyframes so we can fade this one back out. And the next was Star Trek. Now, I have three Star Trek videos. And I think I wanted to line this up with how simple... Because the, the stations that they used in the game looked really lame. No, that's not Eagle Flight. Where's the... Um, there we are, Star Trek. Um, so they... No, uh, they showed... Yeah, there it is. There we go. Okay, so like, look at this. So, okay, you're you're playing Star Trek bridge or bridge crew in VR, and you have what? This is this is just an available power meter. So you've got three meters, phasers, some levels, maybe shield levels, and engine power prepare for warp and two slider bars that probably don't do anything and system display. So you have four commands that you can do. This is not a complex game. And I was more than mildly disappointed when I saw that part, but I'm still, uh, I'm still sure it'll be fun regardless. Uh, okay. So that was right. It isn't as graphically track, amazing as some others and the very, all right, and they're very simple. So this is where we want to line up the um, the simple command structure. And we'll get our fade out really quick because we happen to be here. And we can wipe out that audio track because we don't need that either. And then, again, just take the left left-hand edge of the clip and extend it back through here. All right, we're getting there. Moving in the right direction. Next clip was Vikings. Um, uh, yeah, for honor. And this one doesn't have an awful lot of... Uh, it doesn't have any particular clips that I need to, to link things to, so I just need a, a chunk of battle that looks good. Um, maybe that section that, uh, that kind of made it look like it was a Dynasty Warriors game, because I did comment on, on how it looked like a Norse Dynasty Warriors. So let's do that. It's a pretty short, short piece to talk about. That works out okay. And again, 
all of the same stock standard stuff. And I do apologize at this point, this, this is where the production of one of these videos starts to get a little bit more on the monotonous side. Um, uh, but I keep promising, you know, when I'm going to have a video ready. And I said today I was going to have it done by noon was my plan. Um, and when you start to see just how much goes into one of these things, um, that can change rather quickly. Uh, okay, so the next piece is a multi-cut uh, that I didn't rename. And this is for Grow Up uh, Trials of the Blood Dragon and the movie. So we just need a little section nobody cares about this game. That's perfect. We need a little section about Trials of the Blood Dragon, which was this, like, motorcycle game. I don't know. It's like they thought that they would strike lightning twice. Or get struck by lightning twice. Twice. Because Blood Dragon did quite well, right? So all I'm doing right now is I'm just getting really rough chunks of video. Um, and I'll show you how we get those lined up here in just a moment. But rough chunks that are about where I need them to be. And we'll bring those over here. So... And we're going to wipe out all of the audio tracks from those because, again, we don't need those ones. So the way this works, we've got, I mentioned, go home. Next up was a section home, with a few things that I wanted to touch on but not spend much up. time discussing. The robot Bud from Grow Home is back in a game called Grow Up. Cle okay, clever or something. So that one ends right here. And I'm not even going to fade these ones. I did, I did the same thing on the previous video, um, the Microsoft one. I just went with a straight blocky jump cut from one to the next. So that goes straight from row up into uh, the Blood Dragon thing. We've also got another super amazing surprise release by the crew that made Blood Dragon. It's a mashup of Trials and Blood Dragon called Trials of the Blood Dragon. And it was released right after it was announced. Let's just say that I've not heard good things so far. And they had the assassin. All right, and that looks like it's a pretty reasonable cut right about there into the Assassin's Creed producer and how that was boring as shit. And then we will fade out the last track. And that is it. That is all for that one. Okay, we've only got two more. We're almost there. This is the home stretch. So, watchdogs. Um, the watchdogs thing, what did I do? I'm, so I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about drones, talking about parkour and the Lululemon thing. So I should probably split this one into a couple. Where was the, oh, there's the drone. Okay. I actually, I really like the drone piece. That was quite, uh, quite slick. All right, so he's going to throw the drone right about here. All right, so that's perfect. We'll take that and do a quick little cut. Just chop that piece out so that we can use that one. And then I need to find... So they had the... Uh, what am I looking for? the jogging girl with the little 11 pants. Come on, where is it? I guess I can dump that audio too. I don't need that either. Right at the beginning? And everybody's just kind of walking around and nothing's going wrong. Yeah, that'll do. That's the one I was looking for. I can match that up right against uh, a piece of parkour. 
just kind of drive that joke home as as not a great joke as it is. And actually, you know what? I, I think I can just leave that because that's right at the end of it anyways. So we could take that out. That piece over there. And there was a good piece at the end of this trailer where he's running around and jumping over things. And, and then he does the, the zip line bit. I think that's right about where I want that one. So you get really used to an awful lot of this jumping around, um, you know, f trying to figure out what piece you want, where you want it to be. Did I just lose my other one? Damn it. Okay. So to start off with, we're talking about drones. I need the drone piece to match up. The drone one was... Ah, shit. You know what? Maybe I don't want the drone thing, because that's gonna that makes it too tight. There's too many other audio clips nearby. So we're just going to start with the drone bit. That sounds like a good idea to me. And where did I start talking about parkour? An up-and-coming hacker who has even more tools than last, including a drone and a remote control car. The game also has a much more convincing parkour system and Lululemon... All right, so that works right about parkour system. We can fade maybe right from there. See, I don't actually claim to be that funny, but I do enjoy at least trying. Um, okay, so the parkour begins as he's running. Yeah, that works. Okay, so we'll take that right from maybe right about there. Expand the other track back to it and give a couple of really quick fades. Actually, you can use control to do this as well, and I probably should do that more often. Dump that audio track we still don't need, and then add our Lululemon bit. Our silly copyright infringement joke at the end. Okay, halfway, extend this track out. Oh, excellent. And it's going to finish right on the DeadSec logo. God, the timing is awesome. I love it. That's actually a good point. They had drones in... Uh, in Wildlands, too, didn't they? All right. I'm pretty confident that that's going to turn out good. Let's take a really quick look just to be sure. Good to be true. So that's a start. The game has a much more interesting protagonist this time around, an up-and-coming hacker who has even more tools than last, including a drone and a remote control car. The game also has a much more convincing parkour system and Lululemon pants so that you too can hit on ladies, parkour away, and then hit people with copyright claims for no reason. Oh, I love how that one finishes. I just, the only thing I don't like, there's the last couple screens of blue. I gotta not have that. So that's fine. We will just have it fade to there and have the other one fade in slightly early. Yeah, I like how that one ends. That's good. Okay, so the last thing on the list is steep. And frankly, I couldn't give two shits less about this one. It was a long video, and I am not a... I'm not a winter sports kind of person, despite the fact that I live in Canada. Mostly because I don't like heights. And this one's going to extend all the way to the end there. We'll dump our audio track. Do our quick little fades. And then we'll see where we're standing and what other little adjustments we have to do. Okay. So, we've got our intro. That's all fine and lined up. We've got our 
Just Dance 2017 following into Ghost Recon Wildlands. The gameplay, the audio track is basically null until it gets to the end, at which point the audio track comes in to tell us how ridiculous Ubisoft thinks gamers sound when they play online with other people. We then break into the South Park reveal, which is taking itself too seriously. We show off that whole thing. Uh, maybe we're showing too much of it. Like that's, again, that's almost, that's 45 seconds, almost a minute. Uh, yeah, I don't really like that. What if we, what if we started it like here instead? That just feels like so much better an idea. Luckily, we can just take everything that we've got without ruining any other things that are lined up. And we can just yank this all the way back. Line that up really quick. Yeah, I think that was definitely too much empty space. People come and they, they watch the news wrap up because it's reasonably quick, right? So... Having way, 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 way too much empty space is just a waste of everybody's time. If we fade that out, then we've got what? From 114 to 124. So just 10 seconds of, of video. That's not too bad. You know, that's not a bad point. Actually, um, the the clip that you're that I'm uh, that I put in there, you're right. That is that is a good point. We we talk about this being some kind of you know more interesting protagonist, and absolutely is nothing shown, or absolutely nothing is shown rather about him and why he might be interesting. Um, Yeah, something like this might be a little bit better. What do you say? I think that's going to work out much nicer. Good idea. I'm glad we thought of it. Okay, so we dump that, drop this one in, and let's make sure that that beginning is going to be okay. So he's this was climbing down. Yeah, that'll do nicely. Okay. Dump that audio track. We're getting there. We're almost done. Yeah, I don't need to show the drone off. It really isn't that exciting. Okay. Now, I think we've got... Okay, our faders are good. The division is boring. Eagle Flight was kind of boring. I want to play a Star Trek game. Faders on everything except those three rapid fire clips, which is intentional. And last but not least, the end card. So right now in the end card, I've got the old news wrap up. And I don't want that one. I would like there to be instead. See if I can find it here. I want the actual news wrap up that ran on the eleventh. Drag that one in really quick. I'll show you the resizing stuff too. So we dump the audio track. We've got the other news wrap up. It's just a matter of finding the right piece of it. So we started on. Kind of this intro y sort of screen, which works good. It fades out to that picture. Yeah, and then back into it. That's okay, I guess. 
It's not a problem. So we have this wonderful thing. We're going to do our faders exactly the same as we've done all the other ones. So the intent here is that um, as, as the, the end of the video comes in, it fades into the regular end card, which just has these gray boxes. And then I'm overlaying a particular video on top of, um, oh, that you're talking about the desktop, the cats. Yeah, that's my, that's my, my late cat. Uh, he didn't make it through Christmas. He was 14 or something ridiculous like that. So he'll probably have a year worth of desktop or something along those lines. Uh, anyway, so I take the video clips from the previous few videos, depending on where they are, um, or what they were about, and we slap them in here as, you know, just extra video content to possibly have people click towards. So I need to have them fade in right around the same time as the other clips do. And then we have to resize it. You just double click on the video clip here, drop it down, kind of maneuver it over the gray, make sure that the gray is not visible around the outside of it. And then we're good. That's kind of basically it. Um, we are just about done. The only thing that we don't have done yet is a new thumbnail. So we're going to need a picture of the actual convention space. Did I have a picture with Eve when he was talking? I think I did. But does it show the whole thing? No, maybe. Come on, give me something. Oh, of course, they've got their logo on the wrong bloody side. That's not good. What other videos do we have on here that might work for this? I guess, you know, maybe this, this shit one would uh, be the right thing, right? It's just totally ridiculous. Yes, no. Maybe the... Oh, that was... Hang on. There we go. That was our shot. The helmet one. Oh, God. This music, I, I, I don't need it right now. <laughs> For God's sake. Okay, I want that, that helmet, arms in the air thing. That was good. No. Keep it over there. Get away from the guitar. Where was it? Damn it. That's close, but not quite. There we go. Okay, so you get yourself to an image that you want to use, as ridiculous as an image as you, you uh, decide you need. And we're gonna take ourselves a picture and import that picture into uh oh hang on actually we are going to do where do i need this to go i'm pretty sure yeah we'll just go into thumbnails news Let me get this open here over on my other. Yeah, go ahead, open, good. So this is my template for all of the news um, thumbnails. They're all basically identical or they, they derive from an identical structure. So we'll throw in our, our ridiculous photo. This is this is bad, <laughs> but hilarious. Uh, I wonder, should we flip it? 
get the panda in there. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to extend this out. And... It's all about disco ball head. Brilliant. So behind the, the game industry news wrap up piece, we've got a little bit of a sort of just a black filter spot. Um, so depending on how bright the area behind it is, you can kind of darken this up, make sure that it's nice and easy to read. Because of course this is going to be read very, very small. And E3 2016. And we'll make sure that that bottom filter is on as well. All right, we're almost there, almost. Do a quick duplicate of our WASD up here. So we're gonna change the colors. And I think whatever the hell this color is, pink of some variety, that works perfectly. So quintessentially Ubisoft. Sorry about the silence. I've I'm about done working on this one. I've had it because we're almost there. All right, so that is saved. Now, all we need to do is get back to our base track here and replace this single image. So just drag that into our workflow. Scale it to the frame size really quick. Do a, just a couple of little fades. Nothing crazy. Delete the old one, move down the new one. And yeah, you're, you're right. I had that, uh, I, I had it positioned incorrectly. Um, that's how you make a news wrap up video, or at least that's how I make a news wrap up video. And it turns into this giant mess of chaos and, and confusion. Um, you know, it looks crazy, uh, but that got us there. Oh, wait, one more last little thing that I noticed just again, because we reposition things, we've got to make sure that we get back in here and properly have our audio track uh, fade out to zero halfway through the last story. So I'm going to set this one up to render and uh, check it out on the channel. It will be up probably within the next 30 minutes or so. So you can see what all of this craziness and hard work actually turns into and what it looks like when it's all done and finished. And now I need a break. So I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, who knows, maybe I'll do this again another time. Cheers. Bye.